and welcome to Life of Love with Julia and Friends. I'm really excited to introduce you to our guest today. Our guest is Juan Lee, and he is an author and a teacher of the power of love. He's a founder and executive director of a nonprofit called Clear Journey that provides education to those who are seeking to live a successful life. Please welcome Juan Lee. Thanks for being here, Juan. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, yes. So I wanted to hear, what's the title of your book? Uh, the book is called Love Made Simple, The Guide to Inner Peace, Contentment, and Success. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So the foundation of love is is right there. I can see can see how you feel about that and and your dedication to it and all the things you're doing. When I was reading about your background and in your book, and I, you know, I was very curious about your perspective on living a life to give. Okay, uh, living the life to give is the essence of being able to demonstrate love. Um, it's the basically love is is acting on behalf of another person. It's the ability to act on behalf of, of others. And that's giving. Um, the process of being able to do that is having something to give. And that takes the ability to develop yourself using love's attitudes to develop yourself so that you might have that to give to others. And that's, that's yeah, that's the power of love and in a nutshell, so to speak. And being able to understand that is essential to living this ex- this uh, this life called this experience called life. I like what you said about living the powers of love. I think you said that. What can you expand on what that means? The power of love is is the ability to be able to you know put this mindset or this 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 attitude, put actions to it. And so when we're able to act out of, out of, on behalf of others, and love is about the love for humanity, you know, so for me to qualify this and to understand that our, our existence here in this experience called life is to protect and preserve humanity. And how we do that is operating under the system of love um, and and how we do that is applying the attitudes to love in our lives that we might be able to demonstrate love to one another daily in a, every in every situation that we're in we have that opportunity and by doing that we invest into humanity so that we can indeed protect and preserve humanity into the future that's a really big concept with that that humanity is the core of it all. And there, there are so many, so many ways we could demonstrate humanity. Um, what, how do you guide people um, if they're lost and they, they don't even feel like they're part of humanity? They might feel isolated from humanity. Well, you know, that's, that's a real good question because um, everybody is trying to figure this thing called life out. And for the most part, um, the system has already been put in place and it's already figured out. It's, it's already here. It it's repeats itself over and over again, generation after generation. And so what we have to realize is that this experience is something that we're passing through. We're just a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. And we're, we struggle with that. We struggle with understanding that this experience that we are engaged in is temporary. It's something that's bigger than just this dispensation, this time. See, um, humanity was in the past. It's in the present. And we have a input in, a, in, in how will we demonstrate it into the future. And, and that's what love does, is it gives us that uh, ability to invest into it so that it can preserve and protect it into the next generation. But we've got to get engaged in it. We've got to understand that we are just a part 
and not the be all end all of of this experience called life. And 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 yet it is so very temporary and fragile that we have to live in the moment. We have to live in the moment. And that means that we have an urgency to to begin to invest into humanity on a moment by moment case uh, basis. And, and we can't miss out on that because there are boundaries in this experience. And the major boundary is called time. Time is going to require something of you. And it doesn't allow you to sit stable or to sit stagnant. It's going to produce something is going to be produced in this moment. We want to determine what that is by intentionally being engaged with what we want to invest into humanity that will also benefit each of us separately and individually, but also collectively as, as, as human beings. So you're saying if you can come from love, you know that you're providing the highest, the highest good by your service. Let's see, and then you're, you're playing the part of, of, the the map or the framework that's already in place so you can feel a sense of community if you're if you're locking into the love vibration you can get you can receive and you can give but just knowing that you are part of this they say matrix or or energy field that that builds on itself and that you know, we are, we're just, I, I do agree, we're completely fragile. And, and if people could understand how divine their life is and how, how it can be gone, and there's no, I always say this, there's no accident you woke up today, you know, if you can come with every day being with that, that complete presence, like you said, being, being in the moment, that's what it takes. So, but it, it takes also quieting to connect to that moment, right? And connect to your, the piece that you were talking about in um, what do you, t I mean, you're in your experience, how did you find that peace to, to feel the love in your heart? To, was it something you were born with or did you have to find it? How, how are you guided to know this? Here's the thing. Um, when you know who you are, when you can gain that sense of identity and understand your uniqueness, that sets the parameters for your peace. It sets that parameter so that you can then operate and, and know your boundaries in this experience called life. And that's where you gain the confidence to be able to demonstrate love because you have an abundance of it because it's not what you do, it's who you are. The unconditional love. It's, it's, well, I mean, that, that, that sense of love is to understand that there is no conditions to love, okay? And you, you having the ability to demonstrate something that's innately in you because you found that place inside of yourself that is, is who you are. It's that seeking that authentic self. And when you, when you have that, you can give that without any expectations of anything in return. And this, this goes to a little bit about what you're saying, being open to be able to receive love. See, we're not after receiving love. We're after regaining fulfillment out of giving our love. And so it's not as so somebody's what I get, I want to get in return. No, I'm looking for you demonstrating the fulfillment that you've gained from what I've given you that brings me fulfillment. When it meets your need, it brings me fulfillment. And that how, that's how, um, that's why we get, we get confused when it comes to um, expecting things in return for love. You know, no, I, no one can give me what fulfillment would, would fill me, how I would be fulfilled by gaining that, that perspective of you becoming your best self because of who I am because of what I gave and I put into you, gave into you. It's, a, it's like a, a parent and a child. You know, 
it's it you don't expect anything back from a child only that they would be all that they can be and that brings fulfillment to a parent that's what love does yeah, that's that's what it gets down to and but you you just have known this or was it a journey for you to find your you, your authentic self i mean oh it was it was a yeah. journey don't get okay. me wrong I was very confused and lost and I didn't know how I was going to survive. I was, I was really, I had an undiagnosed learning disability until I was 37 years old. And. Oh, wow. So you're trying to be something that the the systems have put in place, but you, you weren't. Yeah, and if you if you spend your life looking for acknowledgement or what I want to say, um, you're looking for the outside world to approve of you, right? If you spend your your life looking for that, it's just a it's just a really it's a sentence, really. That's a sentence of misery. Absolutely. Yeah. Approval. And I, you know, that's to me that's the biggest sign you're not living in your authenticity. Is you're frustrated, you're angry, you're hurting. Like all those, all those emotions that you just want to get rid of or suppress or, you know, that you try to hide, your vulnerabilities are those to show you that you're not living it's, your authentic self. That's a frustrated life. Yes. And so suddenly people who are acting out, you have compassion for them. You have you can you can give them grace and then you can you can not take it personally. Like, like so many times, like this person did this, this, and this, and they did this to me. Well, they didn't do it to you. They did it because they're they're struggling. Like, but it, it's hard if you have a trigger, or, you know. But if you can if you can look at the world through that lens, and we can give each other that kind of compassion, you can diffuse and and just. It's like giving them a hug. I mean, the people in that state don't want a hug. They they want to vent. They they need to go through it. And but just being a confident, yeah, you, we can't give them a hug, but we can give them space and say, "I see where you're coming from," and be your authentic self, because then they can feed off your your solidness. And sometimes people might get upset because you're not entering their drama, right? So you just got to give them space. You just hit it on the head because you really begin to then roll right into the fact of how we interact with one another and understand when we know what you just said, we understand people who are not operating in their authentic selves act out in a very not unproductive fashion and manner. And it then begins to play on each of us because they are hurting and they're trying to dis, you know, dispress, depress that feeling of being hurt in one area or some area of their lives. And they're dis- demonstrating it to us. Right. That's what this shooting in Texas, it's just, it breaks my heart because... That person was so desperate, so low. Absolutely. And um, it, it's, it didn't happen overnight. That person wasn't born like that. There's, you know, there's, and it's our society. We need to just do better taking care of each other. Uh, you are absolutely right. Um, and, and, and you have to understand, you, you are nailing it right on the head because of the ability to be able to navigate life having that information that you just shared, having that know that knowledge of knowing that when people are hurting, they hurt people. Mm-hmm. We've got to, this is why love is so important. We've got to begin to put the tools in place to be able to do it because a lot of us and many of us are fighting against just what you talked about there. And that is that they're hurting and we're trying to protect ourselves. You mentioned it earlier. You said it, it makes being able to be vulnerable very difficult. And that's what we're struggling against because we're not allowing ourselves to be vulnerable to one another and really begin to 
share our authentic selves because of our fear of, of, of societal norms. Right. It's, uh, well, that's why I just adore these conversations and, and your perspective on, on love. It, it doesn't, it's not always, oh, let's go out for a date. You know, sometimes love is hard and sometimes love is messy and, you know, it's, it's so encompassing and you know like you said to feel that peace in your heart that you can that you can help someone else and that you know you're not going to accept things the way they are you're gonna you're gonna help humanity evolve because that's what we need to do we need to keep evolving we there's no way there's no other way there is no other way you're absolutely right and it takes it takes us all working together so that we can gain the the the, the benefits for humanity. Um, we're just a small time or a small part of something bigger than ourselves, and we have to really engage that or understand that is that we're here to invest into that which is bigger than ourselves. We've got to be selfless, not selfish. Right. And that, that giving is so, it's so powerful because once you can give and see that your gifts help somebody else, then it reinforces your authenticity and, and your connection. But, um, your value. Your value. Yeah, everyone wants to feel valued. I really appreciate that. Um, and you're, your nonprofit where you teach people success. Um, I wanted to talk about a little bit about that. You know, I find success is a moving target. And um, how do you, when you're coaching somebody at the nonprofit or dealing with, you know, any kind of advisement on that, how do you, how do you teach people to recognize success in their lives? Well, the, the, the thing about it is first that they have to realize is that success starts on the inside and it demonstrates itself on the outside. OK, and that's what being able to in the book I, I have, it's called the guide to inner peace and contentment with and success. OK, so it's once you get that internal um, place of clarity and that that place where you're at at you're centered and and really understand that this doesn't matter with what's happening on the outside on your on the surrounding or that's what is surrounding you it's the ability to be able to be strong and secure in who you are in the midst of whatever the circumstances are and that that you know we're being challenged with this and a lot of people are being you know, are losing that that centering, that centering of, of who they are because of what's happening around them. And we're we're living and we're playing out that frustration and that this this this, this, this discontentment that we see around us. And we're we're basically um, acting it out. I mean, it's it's really difficult for a lot of people to be able to understand that what they see does not have to be who they are, okay? And so being able to understand that you have value and what you have to offer is what's most important, not about what's happening around you. So it's really begin to understand, hey, I am important, I am significant, I have, I have something that's important and I want to be able to protect that by 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 having that peace that's necessary for me to be able to vis visually look around and see things and and see other people that are hurting and understand that that doesn't have to be who I am. I don't have to identify with that hurt, that pain, that sorrow, okay? But I have to understand that I have something unique that I am. I'm very I'm different. I'm nobody's like me. And so that's where you gain that peace that you begin to start to operate in um, so that you can demonstrate that to others. And that's, I mean, that's, 
a very powerful thing to understand that you know you can feel for somebody you can have empathy but that doesn't mean you have to dive into that drama right and it, it we all care about other people so you know that is that's huge because you you're not being heartless by not entering that that's their path and you have to you have to follow your path and and you might have a solution that's completely valid but if you're if you're caught up in that drama you're not going to be resourceful enough to to bring what you can to the table so you know that's that's a huge one absolutely absolutely i mean i mean I, i'm i'm not referring to the ones that are having difficulties in this sense, but but as our society is being more polarizing and more divided you know it's those things that we're living in that polarization and then that division and it's making us it's confusing because we need to come together and it seems like everybody is divided it's like they're they're pushing the ways to divide us and instead of finding the things that we have in common because that's the biggest thing when we're talking about humanity we can't do this if we don't recognize where we are connected at where we're connected at and the thing that we all have in common is is that we all are humans if we need to break it down to that level let's find the things that we have in common and stop looking at the things that divide us let's nurture the things that we have in common so that we can begin to find those those areas where we can begin to move forward with one another because a lot of the the division that we're in today is having to do with the inability to communicate our perspectives and 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 we have to validate each other's perspective and when we're unable to validate each other's perspective we can't communicate with each other because we can't see that they have a perspective that's worth having you know having a conversation with no we have to be able to, as you said earlier um compassion but compassion is a little bit it's a little bit difficult when it's when we're viewing it from a, a perspective of my enemy you know right and you're right and that divisiveness and I, I totally agree and i think it starts so early with labels like you know there there's so many labels and and it just labels make it easy to divide people and that's one of my biggest my biggest pet peeves is when you put people in groups with labels because all of a sudden that person loses their identity their their uniqueness their divinity and it it's it's so it's such a a humanity human I don't know how to say it. it's a humanitarian issue that that people aren't seen as individuals you're part of this group you're a data set and so i i really do i i preach what you're talking about because if if every person isn't divine then where where are we and we come to that that place of every life is precious and every life is a, has a purpose and to go from there go from there and we we can change the world if we can if we can teach our children this if we can remind our elderly this you know and and you're you're right it comes from it comes from each individual person this isn't this isn't a top down this is this is each person doing their part to say i'm i'm important enough to care about somebody else that it matters that i care about you you know and then as you care about yourself and the people around you, you care about your environment, you care about what people are eating, you care about what's in our air, and you get clear on, on what's propaganda and what's real. You know, if people are pumping fear, and they have an agenda. Boy. Boy, you, you all, you're all in the, you have it all covered there because that's exactly that's the clarity that I try to uh, that I try to share is all about being able to navigate all of the challenges that are presented 
from wherever they might come from, that when you have a clear understanding as it relates to what it is that you're here to do, then you can navigate those challenges um, that are that you can clearly see that are misplaced in this experience for you and not have to allow it to derail you so that you can get to your your fulfillment. Um, so you're absolutely right. Those are the, that's the purpose right there. Well, I love that we're having this conversation. I hope it I hope it resonates with people and they share it and um, you can pick up your book and and learn more about living their authentic life. And, you know, the purpose because it's it's important stuff and it's crazy to me we don't teach our children to connect with their higher selves and their soul purpose and and tell our children you have a soul purpose like you're here for a reason you know life is magic you know that the whole idea that you know these babies are born perfect or or even imperfect you know that life exists everything every every soul i meet i felt like they have taught me something no matter what and that's and that's what we're here to do is to advance and to give that originality that we ha- that we are to one another. And, and apart from understanding that, um, we're, we're doing humanity a disservice. Yeah. So who are you to save the world? Right. So you are you are here to save the world like you change it. Who are you to change the world? But you can change the world. Because that's why you're here. Well, absolutely. But, but we don't even know what we're here to be able to do. See, it's very clear when we understand it, in my opinion, that when we understand that this experience called life is temporary, we understand that. You know, it's not just a consciousness or, or, or words. It's temporary. OK. And that means that what does this temporary experience have to do with a greater good? OK. That greater good is humanity. And what is it that humanity we're trying to do with humanity? It's not understood or uh, we assume that it's going to be here next year, next week, next month. But the fact of the matter is, is that we have the capacity as humans to literally destroy humanity. Literally destroy it. And if we don't make a conscious effort to protect it and preserve it, we're destroying it because we don't recognize our role in it. And we're, we're, we're just living it, going through the motion. You know, but this is what I'm saying. We have to be conscious of what we're trying to accomplish, and that is to protect and to preserve humanity for the next generations and generations to come. And every day, if you can wake up and say, how dear, you know, dear Lord, whoever you, whoever, whatever you pray to, help me do my best to preserve humanity. Help me live from my heart. And that, that solves so many problems, right? So many, so many, so many things are solved by just that. You know, I mean, from birth to death, you have this space and time called life. What are you going to do with it that will continue for uh, others to experience it? Oh, and, you know, if people, I mean, I'm not perfect. Some days I am not, I'm not the best giver, but I just feel like if, if the majority of people understood how magical it is to live through that lens of, giving and being in a heart center and being you know it's just things open up and the days that I'm contracted and I'm not feeling the loving vibration I might be stressed or I let things get to me I didn't have the right self-care but when I don't go I don't stay there anymore like once you get your vibration into love and you live in your joy and it's not selfish it's actually soulful and then things just open up. I mean, look, I'm talking to you today, you know, three years ago, I would have been, you know, at TJ Maxx shopping or something, right? 
And I just open my soul up to love. So I just, I'm just a, so happy. I'm so happy to share this. There is a fulfillment that many of us will never experience because we fail to realize that simplistic, that simple um, reality. And that is, is that we're here, as you said earlier, to give. Mm -hmm. It is amazing how love will afford us opportunities that we would have otherwise never, ever had experience or had exposure to. And that's, that's the beginning part of understanding how, va how valuable love is. Because when I said it's a connection, it connects us one to another. It, has, it gives us the connections that we need to reach our full potential. Because we, we are meant to be connected. We have something that someone else needs. And guess what? We have something that someone else needs. I mean, we have need that someone else has. And so. Right. Right. So it starts by seeing everybody as them. Like, I see you. I love that line from Avatar. I see you. It's a, it's a, it's a very powerful position to be in when you can walk through this experience called life with the confidence and the assurance as to who you are and what it is that you're doing. It is, it is absolutely powerful. Um, there is peace in that place. There is contentment in that place with all your needs being met. You don't need affirmation. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. You just, you are. You are because you are. And you're enough. And you're divine. We live in an abundant earth. We have abundance of resources. Just need to share them with love. I love, we started out with peace. And I think we've done a full circle back to peace again. That's, that's the place where we always want to be. That's, where, that's what love does is it allows us to maintain that peace and know the boundaries that are required for us to be able to maintain that peace. And then, like I said, it centers on knowing self. Right. So then if somebody isn't treating you as divine as you are, you can say, hey, I, I'm not good with this. This is my this is my space and this is my this is how I accept being treated. If you can't treat me as I accept to be treated, then I'm going to remove myself from the situation, whatever it is, whether it's the news, whether it's a neighbor who's not respecting whatever. I mean, there's a million different situations, but if you don't give that thing your attention and you put your attention on something that's loving that that is respecting your boundaries, then that's where the energy goes. You know, where attention flows, the energy goes. So, ah, I like that. You're absolutely right. And the ability to know what you just said, to know how to do that and when to do that is critical. It's critical because um, we, we either tend to be on, the, on either side of that and we never understand that there is this, this gray in the middle that really begins to understand that when we do this, we have to say, okay, explain to the person why it is you're removing yourself and not just really moving yourself. They need to know why you're removing yourself. Okay. This is my space. And I, I need you to recognize that this is the space that I'm, I occupy. Now, for me to engage you, I need to, for you to respect that space. And if not, then I'm going to have to remove myself. You're entitled to who you are and the way that you are, but that's not the space in which I occupy. Right. It's so, it's so empowering to be like, okay, you do your thing. I'm going to do mine. You didn't feed into their, 
whatever they wanted you to feed into because you can feed into negative negativity just as easy as you can feed into love and sometimes it's more you know you get your, your adrenaline flowing sometimes it's sort of fun to have a conflict you know like it can be it can jazz you up but if you can if you can realize that you're you know that you you're removing yourself from that situation and and they didn't get they don't have power over you if you don't react and enter that drama or that vibration that they're trying to they're trying to pull you in i mean it's so obvious when you start looking at it that way you know um and then when if i see other people get pulled into the drama it's like oh my gosh that just happened and and i tell you one of the one of the easiest ways to do it is gossip when it's very easy to get drawn into gossip but that's exactly an example of what i'm talking about when you can make a stand and say that's not the space that i occupy mhm you know how I shut that down so fast? I said, I just say, you know, everyone has a path. And people don't know how to respond. When they start to gossip and you say, yeah, I know, like everybody has a path. There's, they don't know what to say. <laughs> it really shuts it down pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, but, I mean I, I, again, I, I, think, I think the more confrontational, and I, and I don't mean this in a sense of, well, yes, I do. It, it, it's to really begin to allow them to know that that's not the space. Because what, what love really does is it puts a mirror up in front of your face. And when you can demonstrate it and they can see themselves as the culprit of opposing love, then it allows them to begin to make changes for themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, but I mean, again, I think I think the more confrontational, and I and I don't mean this in a sense of well, yes, I do. It, it, it's to really begin to allow them to know that that's not the space because what what love really does is it puts a mirror up in front of your face, and when you can demonstrate it, and they can see themselves as the culprit of opposing love then it allows them to begin to make changes for themselves. And so that's why you inform and let people know, okay, this is a choice that I'm making, that this is not the space that I choose to operate in. And then let them know that I won't be participating in it. And then they have to make a decision, is my relationship worth me having to, to stop the conversation here and value me instead of you know, just saying, you know, uh, just trying to dismiss it or trying to push it down so that they can go share it with someone else. No, you need to make a decision whether or not this is beneficial to humanity in a sense as to what are we saying? Because as we are divided in this country, we have a, a tendency to side, to have a tendency to side with people that we agree with. And as a result, not being willing to understand other people's perspective. And in gossip, it's, it's you're one sided. You don't even hear another side. This is the side that you're hearing and you don't know the whole picture, the whole story. But we're willing to take gather an opinion based on someone or third person party uh, example of it. So that's a very uh, significant thing to understand just in something very simple as, as gossip. Because it's going to affiliate, it's going to demonstrate um, those type of things are going to happen daily. They're going to be, you're going to be presented with them daily. Right. And if you're using someone else's entertainment, you know, you don't want to talk about yourself or something, you know, of, of mm -hmm. value. So you're using that person to deflect and as entertainment, but it, it's hurtful. And then, you know, I, I noticed that certain relationships just fall away when you don't, they don't know how to engage with you anymore. And like you said, they'll choose whether your friendship is that important or if they're going to go vibrate with somebody else that, and, and that's, that's, that is at that place. And that's the benefit of being able to understand how, how to maneuver bad relationships with good relationships. Because ultimately, you're looking for value in relationships. 
if they're adding value, those are the ones that that can that can resonate with you. But those that don't resonate with you, they're not bringing good value to you. And those are the ones that will find them way, find their way away from you. They're, they'll move away from you. But you've got to present, you got to be your authentic self. And that's the part that's important right. at all times. And that, that keeps you from wasting, I don't say you're wasting time on people, but I, I do want to say you're wasting time. Because if you're using your energy to try to change somebody, somebody to, to think the way you're thinking, um, then it's not the best use of your time. So <laughs> that's that segues into another very interesting thing, because this is what you need to begin to establish relationships, whether they are any types of relationship and especially romantic relationships, because this is where you really have to know where your value relationships are and how you know to determine them. And again, it starts back with understanding who you are. Because you can't add value to something that you don't know what's originally the, 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 the plight of where you are. You know, you're just going to pick up something to throw it in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the basket and you're trying to make lasagna. But, you know, this is not consistent with lasagna. I mean, you just throw it in the basket. No, that, that's not what we need. We need just the ingredients that's going to help me make lasagna today. Mm, and what a powerful thing when you, when you know what you're bringing to relationship and you can enter any kind of um, physical union with that I, the idea of what, what you're bringing is something totally unique and only something that you can bring. And that person has their own alchemy and it's a, a spiritual experience instead of a uh, a release or some kind of, you know, like primal thing. It's, you know, it can, it's an elevated experience that I think gets lost in so much that, you know, we're not treating each other as divine, you know, beings. We're, we're, we have these bodies and they can do wonderful things if we just acknowledge how wonderful they are instead of using them as tools. <laughs> So uh, I love that. I love that perspective because you have, you know, relationships, everything. Every, relationships can mirror like your difficulties too, right? So if mm -hmm. you're tolerating somebody who's not respecting or, or treating you the way that you're needing to be treated, then like you said, that's, you need to look at yourself. You got you to gotta understand what you're bringing because if they can't, if you know what you're bringing and they can't be there for you, that's a big sign. Like, don't waste your time anymore, you know? Every situation is, is different. And you've got to be able to understand there's a time and a place for tolerance. And then there's a time and place not for tolerance, okay? Um, it, intimate relationships and romantic relationships is not the place for tolerance, okay? That, that's, that's not the place. <laughs> um, because that's only going to grow into this uh, divide, okay? Um, but when you're trying to bridge the divide, tolerance is necessary because you've got to be able to begin to see the other one's perspective. Um, and that's the difference between um, trying to put a, something together, bridging something, versus trying to build something together okay okay so it's it's the intention you have to know your intention because each every, every you have to know your goal so that's that's an important that's really important yeah yep. absolutely absolutely That is, that's really great. Um, well, I, I wondered, was, is there anything else that was on your heart today to, to share? Well, I, I will just, I will just say this, that um, I normally, and I, and I gathered, I said a little bit about it, but, you know, love, being able to demonstrate love is, is, is not for the weak in heart the weak in mind. It, it takes work. Okay. And the ability to do it is, is it really comes from 
the inside. It's, it's really giving of yourself. And when you're able to do it, there is nothing greater than love. The ability to demonstrate, to be able to act on behalf of another. There's, no, there's nothing greater than that. And so if there's a takeaway today, is be willing to do the work that allows you to find your authentic self so that you can give it to the world. I love that. I love that. And it doesn't have to be with people right away. Sometimes it's show love to nature. Start with something really accepting. You know, maybe it's helping out at a shelter to take care of some dogs. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be with a complex person that has a lot of baggage too, right? (laughs) Like, start with love, you know, like, (sighs) Well, I really adored this time with you, and I appreciate all of your insight. It's, I, I, I just, it was really cool to hear you say from your perspective a lot of things that I came, I came to the same conclusion from my perspective, and, and I feel like we bridged a gap, and I, I love that. I love that. I think it's however we get to love is to how we get there. But once we begin to demonstrate it, we can see it. Each of us know when we can see love. Right. We can recognize it. Yep. So like you said, like keep, just keep striving for it because it's, it's the heaven on earth. It's our nirvana. All right. Yep. Boy, wouldn't, wouldn't people <laughs> want to put their arms around We could them. bottle and sell that. <laughs> All right, Juan. Well, thank you again. I really do appreciate it again. And um, I look forward to get, getting a copy of your book. And I, I will put um, a link to the title so that uh, we can share it with the audience. Yeah. I, I would also like to share about my nonprofit. It's clearjourney.org. Um, please come in and check it out. Um, we're, we're about demonstrating love and through, uh, education and, uh, empowerment. Um, so we're looking for supporters. Um, if you're interested in supporting donations right there on the website, and also we're having a, a webinar that's coming up soon this month. Um, but once it's a live webinar will be posted onto the uh, website so that you can experience it. And uh, afterwards, it's going to be a financial literacy uh, webinar. Um, so please come on over and, 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 uh, and experience uh, Clear Journey's uh, platform. We really appreciate it. Oh, that would be a great resource. Thank you. Okay, all the best. Thanks, Juan. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you for tuning in today, friends, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like, share, and get alerts for upcoming podcasts. We'll have another one coming at you next Thursday. I hope you have a great one, and remember, each moment is a chance to live the life of your dreams. Take care.